Konnichiwa, Samurai James here. Today we're going to be taking a look at an unboxing for some European armor. So real quick before I get into the review, I always appreciate likes, subscribes, and comments. It helps the algorithm, helps me get my count up here, helps me get more viewers, help me get some ad revenue. That'll pay for better audio, better video, equipment like Tatami and such. I've also set up a Patreon and I'll have a link down below for that. So appreciate the support as always, and let's get into the review. All right, so I got a box in front of me here from Ice Falcon Armory. I'll have a link in the description below. They're typically associated with SCA armor. However, I do like their chainmail offerings, which is properly called mail, but I'm gonna probably refer to it as chainmail because that's the normal nomenclature that people are used to hearing. So without further ado, let's pop open the box. business card of course and the shirt itself ah. all right so what I've got here is a six millimeter stainless steel halberdian Ice Falcon is actually one of the only people that I found doing 6mm in stainless. This was pretty important because I've got a 6mm shirt that had developed some rust, so I wanted to make sure that I picked up something stainless that would be a little bit easier maintenance for days where I'm simply doing Renfair or something where I don't have the time or can't invest the time in cleaning up properly afterwards. Now the links look pretty good. Everything is closed up really well. Um, I do spot one trying to come open here, which is not unusual for this particular type of mail, especially with this many rings. Uh, as far as I'm aware, this is actually made in India. So as far as Indian quality standards go, this seems to be better than their usual offerings. Uh, just flipping through here. Everything is looking good. Yeah, this is all looking good. All right, let's try it on. All right, I've got my Revival Clothing arming doublet on, so let's go ahead and throw the mail over top of it, see how it sits. Get through the sleeves. Flip it up. All right. Pull the sleeves down. All right, so first thing, we can see that the sleeves aren't really tapered or uh, custom fit right here, which didn't really expect them to be because a lot of these uh, types of shirts aren't. However, since I'm going to be cutting off part of the sleeve, that's okay. This will be worn with a uh, what people usually call full plate arm harness, meaning that I'm going to have plate covering a lot of it. So the only thing I'm going to need mail for is the inner elbow here at the top of the shoulders and a little bit around the bicep. So that's going to work out really well. I do wish it wasn't split here in the front um, for the style of armor that I have. Shouldn't be a split here. I'm going to see if I can get some rings. Basically sew the front of it up. Even though it's male, it can be worked very similar to cloth. Um, armpit fits nice and tight. This is important for getting some plate on over it because that means the plate's going to be able to really slide up my arm and get into place properly. So I do have a shirt that has a very baggy uh, armpit to it and it's difficult to get the plate over it properly. And even when you do, it kind of bunches up so it doesn't quite move right. So overall, definitely happy with the shirt. Um, let's take a look at a few close-up pictures here and I'll sit down and discuss it a little bit more. So overall impressions with the shirt, it's excellent. The fit is exactly like I expected it to be. I'll be trying it on with my cuirass on top once I get some assistance with actually getting the cuirass on since I can't do that myself. Uh, one of the drawbacks of European armor is you can't dress yourself completely, uh, whereas with the samurai armor I can certainly dress myself. 
but this fit exactly like I wanted. I've given it another quick close up. Uh, I didn't find any rivets that were missing from the rings. I did find a few that were loose, but that's no big deal. Simply tighten them up with my male uh, setting pliers. So no problems for that. I really wish it didn't have the riding slits at the front and back. Um, would have been nice to know that uh, up front. Unfortunately, the pictures that are associated with the uh, shop or the site uh, were not working. He's working on getting those recovered. So I wasn't quite sure what I was getting, but most of the time a Hauber Gen, which is what this is, which is a short sleeve and shorter length waist uh, shirt, doesn't have the riding slit. That's more often associated with a Hauberk which would be sleeves down to the elbow and have a longer uh, hemline down to a bit above the knees or down to the knees depending on your height and exactly how long it was built but that generally has a slit so that you can you know uh, spread your legs apart to get on a horse and everything with the Hauber Gin since it's only coming to mid or upper thigh you really don't have that issue as much because the male will simply slide up a little bit um, I'm hoping he can carry some loose rings and rivets in the future so I can fix that with some stainless ones for now, I've got some 6mm mild that I'll go ahead and use as a temporary fix. But overall, very happy with the shirt. Looking forward to getting it out and using it. Now, is this an expensive shirt? Of course it is. It's $900 for this particular size plus shipping, so it came out to about $930, which is expensive. You could buy a couple mild steel shirts for a cheaper price if you wanted, but I had a few photos that I wasn't particularly happy with where I had my mild steel shirt on and it had rusted. so. Definitely want to have something stainless that I know is going to be in very good condition when I want to go take some professional photos and not have to worry about the appearance of it. It's always a bad idea to not properly maintain your armor. Uh, in this case, it simply happened due to end of the Ren fair season, then my wife was pregnant and we moved, and unfortunately I was just lacking on the maintenance on it, as sometimes happens just due to life. So riding sled aside, the only thing I would say that's really a downside to this shirt is the price. It's about two and a half to three times the cost of a regular mild steel shirt. So you could buy multiple shirts in regular mild steel versus the stainless steel. So that's really about the only drawback. The quality is better. The rings seem to be set better. That may also be because I haven't bought a shirt in a few years. And you know, this one is maybe what their current standard is. My other shirt's four or five years old at this point, but the quality on it is excellent. My old shirt was also not by Ice Falcon. So that might be apples and oranges. However, as far as I'm aware, both of them source from uh, Indian companies. So we can probably expect very similar standards to it. But price aside, everything else to it is excellent, and I look forward to getting probably a male standard, which would be a neck piece in the future, and possibly a standalone skirt or fold as well. And one last thing with this review, you'll be seeing this coming up again in the future, as I'm going to have a video dedicated specifically to mail for a few different types of European mail, as well as Japanese mail, and how weapons are effective or not effective against it.